Oh, and while you're here, check out my cool ring. Love it. Hello, how are you feeling? You got John Riggs here talking about cozy games on the NES. You see, growing up, especially in the 80s, everything had to be action extreme. So when it came to the NES, you wanted to play games like Contra, like Shatterhand, like Double Dragon 2, and not so much like... Well, this is a Hello Kitty game from Japan, but this Hello Kitty game from Japan would have made an excellent game that came out in the US. I wish it did. Cozy as a category for video games didn't even really exist until like, it seemed like a couple of years ago. And we've had games along the way, you know, like Farmville, like Animal Crossing, but more so recently, so many of the games I have been playing on my Nintendo Switch, so many games on Game Pass. They're all these kind of feel-good, cozy games. And even though it wasn't a genre, we had a few cozy games on the NES, and we're gonna talk about a few of those in this video. Starting off with a personal favorite of mine, Adventures of Lolo, that's right. Super cute, fun puzzle game. I really, really, really enjoy this game. There are three of them, on the NES. One and two are my favorite ones. The third one, although many people might consider the third one the best one, I still like going back to these the first two more than anything. You play as this cute little Lolo and you shoot your eggs and you have to capture the enemies and collect all the hearts to get the treasure to move through the stages. I love this enemy right here. Watch this. Watch what happens when he touches you. Ah, oh, it's the best thing ever. And Lolo 2, more of the same. After you play through Lolo, you can certainly move on to Lolo 2. I just love games like this. The later levels definitely provide a challenge, but I think it's a lot of fun, and I think you're going to enjoy it if you've never played the Lolo games. I've got to talk about Princess Tomato in the Salad Kingdom. It is a text adventure where you can move here, look at this, use this, give this to this character. Well, you play as Sir Cucumber looking for your Princess Tomato, and I absolutely love this game. The text is a little cryptic, where sometimes you know what you're supposed to do next, but it's not letting you until you do something. It seems like something completely unrelated, but you have to do that first, and then it opens up the, like, oh yeah, by the way, there's this thing here. Well, that happens a lot in this game, so it might get a little frustrating that way. But I absolutely love the characters in this game. I absolutely love the story. It's, it's my most sentimental video game of all time. I will trade off and sell off my entire video game collection. I will never get rid of Princess Tomato in the Salad Kingdom. I love it that much. So much so, it's literally featured in every video I do from this room right here. Check out this nice little shadow box thing that my wife got me for our anniversary. <laughs> That's how much I love this game. I love it. Look at this. That's that cool. I got this on Etsy, I believe. I might include Bubble Bobble on this list. And again, cozy wasn't really a genre for NES games during the time. I mean, you know, it, like not a whole lot of games just featured unlimited lives or just play through the game. And no, not cozy games don't even have to do that much. But just cute, colorful, non-stressful, just easy to play. I mean, yeah, there, there might provide a challenge later on too, but just fun and just, it's okay. It's okay to play, you know? And you gotta love Bubble Bobble because it's just, it's like the best. It's the best. And two player as well makes it awesome. If we talk about Bubble Bobble, we could also talk about Rainbow Islands. Though they call this the story of Bubble Bobble 2. Although, yes, there was a Bubble Bobble 2 for the NES much later in life. This game may even be a little bit more of a cozy game because you create the rainbows and then you can either use the rainbow to capture the enemy or attack the enemy or make the rainbow go above them, jump on the rainbow, and it'll fall on top of the enemy. <laughs> There's a lot of ways to play this game as you keep moving up, up, up to uh, get to, uh, through these stages here. I'm a huge fan of Rainbow Islands. Love seeing this game. Plays very well on the NES. It's definitely a throwback, but I might even include Castle Quest in this game. When I was thinking about cozy games, how much I just enjoyed playing this game. You start with 50 lives. That's not terrible. And the enemies move in such a pattern that they're easy to avoid. Now, you can stab them if you'd like. Not all enemies are, you know, killable, I suppose you could say. But it's just fun to explore, fun to look around. You can just play this game at your own pace. I've only beaten this game once, and I wouldn't mind going through it again on Twitch sometime. But check out Castle Quest if you haven't done so. I know it looks super old school, because it is, but I think it's a lot of fun. And again, you got 50 lives, and look me up on Twitch sometime, because I want to stream through this game again. And speaking of Twitch, I wanted to invite one of my cozy Twitch friends to this video. Here's a great cozy NES pick from Ash Said Hi. Hi everyone, my name is Ash Said Hi, and I'm here to talk to you about my favorite cozy NES game, which is Kickle Cubicle. I mean, even the name is super cute and cozy. I absolutely adore this game, and I know it was originally an arcade game that was ported to the NES. The story is you are Kickle, 
You wake up to find out that your kingdom has been frozen and turned to ice by an evil wizard king. And now you must go through many different levels and solve puzzles to save your kingdom. This is a cozy game to me because the enemies are super cute. The character that you play as is super cute and the music is adorable. And I think that puzzle games in general are pretty cozy to play. I don't know. It's something about puzzle games that just relax me. So if I had to make a choice for a cozy NES game, Kickle Cubicle will definitely be it. And if you've never played it before, definitely check it out. And I hope to hear what you think about Kickle Cubicle. Make sure you give a follow to Ash Said Hi on Twitch. You know, it's funny, when I reached out originally, I said, just pick literally any Nintendo game and I will pick the rest of the games. But the very first game I thought of for cozy NES games was Kickle Cubicle. And then they picked Kickle Cubicle, so worked out pretty well. If you're talking about cozy NES games, you, you could throw Kirby's Adventure in there. Of course you could. Well, this game's just fun. I mean, this is, this Kirby's been around a long, long time. And this is the third Kirby game, but the very first Kirby game where you can actually use the copy ability. The first two Kirby games, you couldn't, you know, inhale the other enemies and use their abilities, but you can in this one. And that's what makes it the best. This is the one on the NES. This is Kirby's Adventure. This was my introduction to Kirby. I was kind of familiar with the Game Boy versions, but I didn't really play Kirby until this version came out. And man, I'm glad I did. Still super fun. Love this game. Taking it all the way back to 84 with Balloon Fight. That's right. This game's almost 40 years old, can you believe it? Well, it plays a lot like Joust, and Joust was a favorite of mine in the arcade, but just cuter, and just, I think it's more fun than Joust. Joust is, like, scary. <laughs> Joust is, like, with those old-school arcade sound effects. Oh, my God. You know, like, when the, when the buzzard flies through and everything? Yikes. This game, pop the balloons, knock the enemies off into the water. Uh, there you go. And uh, the Balloon Adventure, the, um, what's it called here? Uh, balloon Trip, that's right. Balloon Trip um, is, is a lot of fun, too. It gets, it gets pretty hectic later on. Um, I haven't really made it through very far, but <laughs> I, I gotta keep trying. I'm a huge fan of Balloon Fight. Gotta include that on this list. I may even include Chubby Cherub, just for the looks alone. This game can provide a challenge, however, as long as you keep eating, you can just basically fly all the way through the stages. Although there are some parts of the stages that do stop until you collect all the items in-game. Now you can walk around and jump and stuff like that too, and you have your little hearts that you shoot at these dogs mostly. But still super fun, Chubby Cherub, it's one of my favorites. Mappy Land, yeah, why not? Let's, let's talk about Mappy Land just for a second. I do like talking about this. It looks like a kid's game, it is not a kid's game. There's a lot of challenge, especially later on uh, with this game, but each stage has collect all the items to move through the screen, perfect. You don't really have weapon weapons, but you do have other items to kind of distract the other enemies to help you move through the stages too. But Mappy Land, absolutely love this game. What about Mickey Mouse Capade? Or the title screen just says Mickey Mouse. I could include this, I suppose, too. Nice and easy going, pretty fun. Uh, just an early Mickey Mouse game, and this was uh, may have been the first Disney Capcom game to come out for the NES, and then all the other great games, too. So if you include this game, I suppose you could have included DuckTales, Rescue Rangers, The Little Mermaid, for sure. But I'll at least talk about, uh, at least talk about Mickey Mouse Capade in this video. Yoshi's Cookie is a game I just can't get enough of. Now, they do have Yoshi's Cookie on the Super Nintendo. I prefer it on the NES, believe it or not. I think they even had a Game Boy version, too. But with Yoshi's Cookie, you can move the cookies either um, up and down or left and right, and when you get them in a row, either up and down or left or right, uh, then those cookies disappear, which is great. And then you, with more cookies that keep flowing into the screen, you have to get to a point where you can eliminate all the cookies to move on to the next stage. Tons of levels in this game. I absolutely love this game. Yoshi's Cookie. It's one of my favorite puzzle games on the NES. And maybe, just maybe, Adventures in the Magic Kingdom, could we call this a cozy NES game? Well, at least the part where you chat with the people to guess the trivia questions correctly. <laughs> now, some of, the some of the games later on, like some of the levels like the Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, the Haunted Mansion, stuff like that, actually, I, I think those provide kind of a challenge. The, the, the racing one, the Autotopia, yeah, maybe a little bit. It reminds me of Bump and Jump. Uh, but at least the walking around part, talking to people to, uh, you know, to guess the trivia questions correctly, 
Ah, that's that's kind of fun. That's kind of cozy. And you get to wear the um, the the Jungle Cruise uh, outfit. That's kind of fun too. Again, cozy wasn't a genre of NES game, especially back then. Let alone you know a few years ago. Uh, so what are some other great cozy NES games that we could talk about? This is more the U.S. games. There are some great cozy games, especially those Sanrio games for the Famicom. We could include those too. Maybe that'll be another video for another time. Super Nintendo cozy games. Well, that'll be a video coming up as well. Make sure you're subscribed. Thank you so much.